everybody. <laughs> Terry Wager Generator Coaching, Walter Amarillo. We're here talking about mindset, emotion set, action set, having to do with your business, having to do with your wealth, having to do with your growth. And Who won't make more money? <laughs> growing more money. More money podcast. And as we're talking, Gwalter is just going to go up and down playing with his camera. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm, so new toy. I can get very exciting just by, you know, zooming in. So Dr. Terry Wager, this week we did the 52 weeks of wealth, wealth principle, 52 sharpen the saw. And we reviewed all 52 wealth principles for real estate. And now like in our conversation here, I like to talk a little bit more about business since I think in the market right now, business makes the most sense to be starting and to be building. If you want to make a lot of money, you need to be understanding the principles behind business. And the biggest pain that I've seen people when it comes to making money is their emotion set, which is why I turn to you to figure out how do we get them to, to like your book says, quit taking their own bad advice. How do we get them out of their heads and back into their business, working on their business instead of in their business? Yeah, you know, and one of the things that I've noticed, and it's happened to me, and I'm pretty sure it's happened to you, is we're such technicians at what we do. We're so good at what we do that when we get triggered emotionally, we go back to what we know, and that's what we do. And we fall right back into a pattern of doing more because when we feel like we're doing more, we feel like we're making progress. But a lot of times in business, the doing is what slows us down. And so we want to actually start looking at, okay, what am I doing? What are my priorities? What's happening uh, in my business? And am I actually contributing to moving my business forward? Or am I creating a bunch of busy work because I'm triggered in some way? Yeah, it's funny because we were talking in the in the mastermind today and I had somebody say, well, if I had that many buildings, if I had that many clients, you know, we'll just use it that way. Like if I had that many clients, then I wouldn't have time. I'd be so busy. And it, it's because they were looking at not enough clients, right? Like if you start looking at a thousand clients versus 10 clients, 10 clients could be a lot of work. But a thousand clients means you can't be involved. It's impossible for you to serve. So now your systems have to get big enough to bring other people in to solve the problem, which eliminates you from being in it. So like, how do you get somebody to start thinking on the scale of enough to hire somebody? Because I see most entrepreneurs go to just enough to keep themselves super busy and then maybe a little bit more just to, just to keep themselves, um, like to hire enough help to still need them. But how do you get somebody to just aim at a big enough target that forces them out of the business? Right. And, and I think that's the, the struggle for everyone, because one of the things that I think happens for all of us uh, is this idea that I built it. And so it might be my mess, but I built it. And so I'm very proud of my mess. It, it, I, I built my program. I built my business. I built my life. Whatever it is, the, the common denominator is me. And so if I'm not in it, what do I have? And that's not going to be of service to us the way we want it to be. And so one of the first things that I think about is the idea of, and, and setting the context a little bit, the idea of a business is it's to be of service to a group of people. And so the, when we're looking at a business and we're looking at the idea that it's to be of service to people, yes, we might want to be of service to people, but the more we're involved in it, the less service we can be to more people. And this is exactly the problem I had in my private practice in psychology. I was one guy and I had a lot of clients. For one guy with one private practice, I had, you know, 40 appointments a week. That's 40 hours a week and way overworked because I got to do all the notes. I got to check up on, I got to keep track of all of this stuff. And not I think I think lawyers and chiropractors, absolutely, and like in real estate agents, they find themselves in the same exact boat. Oh, uh, I'm I, I see a chiropractor, and every time I see him, he's like, um, "I, I want to grow bigger. I don't know how to." And I'm like, "I have some ideas," uh, but the we end up staying small because we have the mindset that we have to do the work, and you know, there's there's three areas that we want to look at in the human being system. 
I'm interested. I'm paying attention. <laughs> you said three. I was like, it's simple enough for me to understand. Absolutely. The three areas is ourselves, right? The intrinsic self, the emotions, the thinking, and the behavior. And you know, funny enough, behavior and thinking are kind of the same, but it's an internal thing we're doing with our thinking. We do it. So it's a behavior. But our thinking is what is actually a lot of the times in our way. Our action doesn't get in our way as much as our thinking. Because our, our a, behavior, our thinking creates the action. Exactly. And so what happens is we have the emotions and then we go into thought. And a lot of times our thinking is where we get hung up. But that's yeah, and our, our emotions are just fuel. They're just energy. And then they get funneled into our beliefs or our thoughts. Exactly. And then whatever comes out. Exactly. And so... Um, you know, a lot of people talk about controlling your thinking. Well, great. That's fine. Well, but people talk about controlling their emotions. I hear, I've heard that, I hear that more often. And it's like, that's not a good idea. You don't want to control your emotions. Well, I, I Channel want, them. What, what I like to do, I like to go, okay, you're going to control your emotions. Let's actually piss you off and see how controlled you are. Um, or let's, let's give you a huge gift and, and excite you and then see how controlled you are. You know, give you some... A major windfall, like win the lottery and see how controlled you are. I guarantee that you make some dumb moves right after that because emotional peaks and emotional valley, valleys, we, we have problems making good decisions. And let's just be honest, we have problems with decisions when we're pretty emotionally balanced. Our emotions drive all of our thinking, which drives our behavior. And so when we realize that, it's like, okay, so the more I have a relationship with my emotions, the better off I am. But we're getting off topic there, and I can go into that for years and years and hours and hours, and everybody knows that. However, that, that's the intrinsic me. Then there's the extrinsic, the, the out, ex, external, which is what I do, who I am, to the people around, and how I be of service, and all of that idea. And that's where people live a lot is my goals. And I was actually um, in LinkedIn yesterday and I saw somebody talk about these goals. And, and you know, the funny thing is we've talked a, a number of times about how everybody has content, content, content. And everybody has very, very similar content. But the, the internal us, the emotions, the thought, the behavior that we have, that inside of us is what actually fuels the goals, but if we're not paying attention to ourselves, then my goals turn into your goals. Your goals turn into whoever's goals. And then I have a, all of a sudden I'm living my life based on your goals. Yeah. And I didn't even know I did it. Yeah. And so then I just turn into a doer. And that's and 95% of the planet is just working a nine to five, doing somebody else's goal because they just saw something and said, okay, I can fit into that. Let me go do absolutely. that. Absolutely. And then the third is the system with which we live in. Now, everybody grows up, 95% uh, of the people grow up in the family system. And we play a role in that system. And we, we identified ourselves in that system based on what we do and what they do and all of that type of thing. And we get lost with ourselves and what we're supposed to do and then how we fit in the system. And this is exactly what happens in businesses. So we've got internal beliefs, external beliefs, and you said there were three things. The system, you piqued my interest. Systemic <laughs> beliefs, systemic, systemic action or the orientation, how the system works or what's supposed to happen in the system. And it, it's the, the actual practical application almost. And so it's what I do, but how it's supposed to be done. And so it's, it's the, the practical outside systemic kind of way things are supposed to happen versus what I'm supposed to be doing in it. And we get stuck in that doer role instead of paying attention to the system. And we forget all about ourselves. And so when we're forgetting about ourselves, we start to get really frustrated. We start to get really um, uh, bound up in not hitting our goals. We start to think about how the system is keeping us from doing it. You know, the world is stopping me. 
uh, these people outside are stopping me. And we go to the blame and the shame and, and, and criticizing what's not working. And where it really lies down is us. We're focused on the system and we're focused on trying to work inside of a system instead of going, okay, wait a minute. Is this even a system I want to be in? And I mean, if, if you look at uh, the last year, the great resignation, well, people are starting to realize that they don't want to be in a bigger system like that. And so then they start doing the same thing they were doing in their own system that they created. And all they did is they just created a microcosm of what's going on out there. And, and sometimes they took the good things from the system and copied it, but sometimes it just did the opposite things of the system and copied it and right. thinking, I'm going to do it the opposite way of this giant. And it's, right. it doesn't always work. Right. In front of, in fact, our government system said, you know what works really well? <laughs> this might be a little... Uh, Here we go. <laughs> politically incorrect. But our government said, you know what? It works really well to pay people to do a job. Why don't we pay people to not do a job? And we'll just <laughs> we can see how that goes. That is a great experiment. Yeah. It's not such a great experiment. It has not gone well. And so we have a whole lot of people stepping out of a system that they didn't like. And then we have political correctness and, and all of this different stuff that's happening. And what we've done is we've created a very dysfunctional system where everybody has enough of what they need that they're not actually striving for more. Or, I think I think that comes from just the country lacks vision. The country's not looking at itself. It's it's not looking at where we're going. They're just right. And and so where does vision yeah. come from, Walter? It comes from personal self. I'm assuming. <laughs> and so we forget. And and so what we want to do is we we tend to go to a systemic point of view, mm -hmm. and look at what the system is doing. Which basically for me, my system is all of my friends all of the people that I look up to, all of the things that I'm doing, and I can get swayed very, very quickly by somebody going, hey, you know what would be cool? Why don't we do this? And I go, oh, yes. And I abandon what really rings true to me to what you suggest. Or in my world, it's the real estate market, it's the equities Absolutely. market, the crypto market. It's, Absolutely. oh, well, everybody else is doing this, I should do this. And this is the shiny object syndrome that people mm -hmm. talk about. I also like to call it a fear-based bounce because when we're in fear, we go to system. Because at least I have the structure of something outside of me that I can see. And I talk about when we're making goals and we're, we're looking at goals, when you have an idea of what you're looking for, it's like a puzzle box I actually heard somebody talk about Legos, and I, I like that idea because it's 3D. But how does it look compared to the, the picture, right? The problem is, is when we go systemic and we start looking at the system or we look at the world outside of us and try to make us to fit in that, we forget what we're really about or we aren't looking at what we're really about anymore. And then we set these goals that aren't realistic not because they're not achievable, because almost any goal is achievable. If one person can do it, anybody can. You know, Roger Bannister, everybody talks about him, and he's just a freaking guy that did it once. But um, when we start really looking at the fact that we do this, what the world says we should, we might not be on board with it. And this is why so many people at 50 or 55 or whatever have this midlife crisis thing what they're really banging up against is they've been living their life from a systemic point of view a structure point of view that they didn't actually buy into wholeheartedly and so then what happens is they step back one day and go wait a minute i've created all of this and i can't stand it i don't like any of it i need to go become a monk or I need to go and become a realtor, or I need to go and um, build nonprofits. Well, why do you want to do that? Well, because I saw other people do it, and then they just jump into a new system. New system, and they keep and the cycle they, continues. Then they end up continuing the cycle, and then they create these new goals, and we all get excited about our new goals. Yep. But the goal was never from the heart. It was never from the emotional balanced part of ourselves. It was from what we saw other people do that seemed like they're enjoying themselves. 
Yeah. And so we see this with our students, we see this with our with our clients, we see this with all of these different people in our life where they seem happy, I want to do that. And then we get involved and we're like, this this sucks. I don't like this at all. Yeah. And it's because they're not focused on what they really want and why they really want it. And they don't have their vision. They have a vision. And they missed the fact that our vision comes from alignment with ourselves. And it's it's fine to get on somebody else's vision. It's fine. I, I'm on board with 100 millionaires. But when you first started talking, about, I got to. Um, when you first started talking, about, I was wondering how long it was going to take before one of us did that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, it's like once one starts, it just keeps yeah, going. <laughs> but uh, but when you called me and said that, I was on board, not because I jumped on your vision, but because I already had that vision inside me. It, it touched yours, right? So it touched your vision. Resonated with me. Yeah. Rather than me hijacking your vision. Right. And what happens for most people is they're like, unfortunately, they're emotionally lazy. Yeah. This is kind of the way I would put it. And, and it's probably mean, but I, I, I'm mean sometimes. Um, they're emotionally lazy. They're not identifying their emotions. They don't know how they feel about something. And so they're just glomming on to whoever is the most excited about something. And they're riding other people's excitement. Because they're actually discounting their own wealth, their own yeah. worth, their yeah. own value. And so they discount themselves and then they increase the worth of the other people for the moment, get on board, and then they go, you know what, this sucks. And this is actually why um, different programs and different, you know, when, when we go to seminars and we watch all of these people sign up and then they drop out. It's because those people were not aware of where they were at, where they were at in their life, where they were in their businesses, where they are the relationships. And so they're susceptible to their own bad thinking, their own uh, ego telling them that they got to jump on board with this. And, and here's the thing. I think everybody should invest in programs. I think everybody should invest in something that's going to move them forward whether it's personal development, whether it's a business, whether it's uh, real estate, I think it's very important to invest because if you're not investing, you're losing stuff. And, and so you've, you've got to get into the right programs. But if you don't come in with the right emotional awareness, absolutely, then you won't know the right program. And that's like, if you don't have that clarity around your emotional awareness, that's the, that's the first program to get into. Get that clarity. Absolutely. Around that's, your... why, that's why we focus on it. The generator focuses on you first. We have yeah. five tickets on board to bullet train action. You like this? Five tickets. I'm very interested. I, I love metaphors. <laughs> right. And the first ticket is you. You have to be in line with yourself. And we used to say the second ticket is team, but actually the second ticket is sales. You have to be able to sell yourself on your idea you also have to sell other people on your idea and so you have to be able to influence and so the second ticket is sales the third ticket is building a team around you because if you can't sell you can't actually influence people to join your deal but the way you want to do it is you want to make sure that what you're selling you actually believe in and so, so you have start to start with, with yourself first, first. yeah you got to start with yourself first and if you have any kind of problem, move back to number one. Move back to ticket one. Where are you? What's the foundations of you? And then, how are you selling? Are you pushing? Are you inviting? And, you know, I heard the other day that uh, somebody said something funny to me that, that you're always selling, Terry. And, and I you're said, welcome, because I care about you. you. I said, thank you. <laughs> And uh, one of the things Grant Cardone said years ago in, in, in Seller Be Sold is, I don't want you to mistake my passion and my confidence for pressure. And what he's saying, and what I firmly believe is, my confidence, my passion, I'm going to tell you you belong in my program. I'm going to tell you over and over, I think that you need to be in here. I think you need to work with us, whether it's a consulting thing, and I'm working with a big deal, a big team, or I'm working one-on-one -on -one as an entrepreneur. You need to be with me because I'm going to get you right. That first ticket, get you 
really squared away with what you really want, why you really want it, understand your vision, understand your values, understand your mission. And that's that first ticket. And then when, when we go back to that comment that the person made, the other piece is the pressure we feel is not because of the person selling. Because if I know me, look, Walter, I appreciate it. I'm good. This is the direction I'm going. And although your program is amazing, this is the direction I'm going. And this is why. And it's so easy. Set. It's so easy. And so I would not be a ready buyer or I not be a willing buyer at that point. But if I don't know myself and I start feeling pressure, it's because the pressure is coming from me and my emotions of, I need this. I don't know if I need this. I don't want to look bad. I'm afraid he thinks I'm stupid. And I have all of this noise in my head that we talk about in my book. It, that's the bad advice going on. And the bad advice creates pressure right up there in the corner. And the bad advice creates the pressure. And the pressure is whether I make the decision or not. And the only pressure that anybody ever experiences is avoiding making a decision. Because if you ever think about it, when we make a decision, pressure's gone. It's gone. Head's quiet. Funny enough, when we identify our emotions, the noise is gone. And so yep. when we're emotionally aligned, the noise is gone and we can move forward faster. And so yep. that's why the vision is so important. Right. When a person knows where they're going, knows like what they want to accomplish, it doesn't matter. Like nothing else matters. There's no distractions, nothing get in the way because you're very clear about what the intent is. And the key to it is self-inflection. How do you get somebody to because we we see it all the time. They come into the program or you know, we meet them outside of the program and we're saying, Hey, yeah, you got to get in, you know, join us, like we'll help you get there. But then somebody who comes in who, who isn't clear with themselves. You know, how, what is it you're doing in those sessions that, that creates that clarity in, and what kind of homework are you giving somebody? Something that like somebody listening right now could go and do you know, to the, kind of get the, awesome the thing is we don't actually do a whole lot of homework. And I mean, you've seen the, the, the amazing changes that people have worked with me. It's not homework. It's really, um, what they talk about in NLP, which we're going to be talking about this weekend a lot, but in NLP, they call it reframing. And what I'm really a master at is creating a new frame for which people to see. And so I help them change out their glasses from these ones to these ones. And so they've got these ones that are, are frantic and don't work. And, and uh, 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 I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm, uh, or scarcity frame. And I what I do is, um, and one of, one of our clients said, man, the biggest thing that you do for me is you make my problem smaller. And uh, I would have never said that. I would have never said that. What I do is I make people's problems smaller, but I make their problems smaller. And, and uh, I used to actually say that I spent my life pole vaulting over mouse turds um, because I, I thought the problem was really big. And you got to jump over this problem when you look, oh, it's not that big. And so I've learned through my years how to really see the problem as what it is, which is one, an opportunity, but also... It's, it's really not the problem that my head says it is, but our head creates all of these different stories and that's all we see. And, and one of my friends says, what the biggest problem people have is, is they get a problem and they tattoo it on their eyeball and they see it everywhere. <laughs> so it's totally true. And so what I do is I actually bring attention to those places that the people aren't looking. Because what they do is they look at you and what you're doing. They look at what they're doing. They look at what everybody else is doing. They look at what they should be doing, but they forget to look at themselves. You're like that tattoo removal shop. You go in, remove the bad tattoos. <laughs> we have so many uh, metaphors for what I do. I'm, I take out the trash. I remove the trash from the track. I, <laughs> I take off tattoos. Um, but the the when I start working with somebody, I help them to gain a very strong view of that internal part of them, that intrinsic part, and then create their goals based on the vision that pops up. Because when we get emotionally balanced, what we truly want pops out. Yeah. 
And what most people do, and they don't know it, is they're so busy listening to their ego that they create ego goals. They create ego vision. They create yeah. ego mission. Oh, Gualter's building a million, a uh, hundred millionaires. I want to build a million millionaires. And hey, that's great if that's what you came up with, irrespective of what Gualter wanted. But if you came up with it after hearing his and doubled, tripled, quadrupled it, or, or 10 times it, 10x, right? Uh, I 10x'd his goal as my vision. Why do you want that? Because he did. And I want to be better than him. That's an ego yeah. goal. That's an ego vision. Why do you really want it? I have no idea. <laughs> and so when we Validation. Can, right? <laughs> and so when we can get really clear on why we want to do what we want to do, and the funny thing is, is one of the one of the things that I've seen a lot in the personal development world that I've been in for a number of years now is that nobody wants to talk about their problem of themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where are you stuck? Oh, I'm not talking about this is what I've done. And we see this in our masterminds all the time is that like, this is what I've done. This is what I've done. This is what I've done. Where do you need help? Oh, you know, I think I'm good. Well, shit, I do this. I do this. I think I'm good. Mm -hmm. I've got help. <laughs> I, I, I've chose my helpers. Yep. So what I'm doing is I'm eliminating my great opportunity of hearing from maybe a newcomer or from hearing somebody that doesn't know my situation, that has completely fresh eyes that I have not hypnotized into my world. Yeah. And so what's funny is we're very protective of the way we see things, of my frame. And so I don't want to change. Even if it's terrible, well, I created it, so it's good. Before I hear your input on my ideas, let me tell you all of my ideas and make sure you understand all of my frame so now you're in my frame, stuck like me, and now you can't help me either. How does that feel? And that's what everybody wants to do. One, I've been accused of cutting people off before they're finished with their sentences when they're telling me what's going on. <laughs> I do it on purpose. Not because I don't like them, but because I want to have a different frame of reference than what they've created in their world. It's the times you need that pattern interrupt to, to stop you from continuing the same routine you've been doing. Get the Absolutely. same result you've been getting. Absolutely. And so when we're looking at working with somebody and growing their business, the first thing that I tend to do is move away from what they've already created. And I move back to, okay, let me hear your vision. Let me hear your mission. Let me hear your values, all of the different things that, that create the boundaries around your business. And then how much do you agree with them? Is that what you really want? How does that what you really want? validate oh, you, serve you? Yeah. How'd you come up with them? Tell me yeah. a story about your life. I want to hear a little bit about where you grew up, how you grew up, because my values do not come out of what I want. My values, my vision, my vision for helping people all came out of where I was hurting. Yep. What I didn't like, how my life wasn't working for me, because I don't want people to experience that pain that I had out of living my life in a way that wasn't working. And so when we start really looking is like our vision doesn't come out of all of the wonderful things. It comes out of what didn't work. The irony. <laughs> right. And so when we can, when we can really look at it and, and Patrick Lizioni, um, major, uh, guy in the idea of, uh, organizational health, uh, one of the things that he talks about is the vulnerability that we have to have in our business with the people that we work with, with the people that we employ, with the people that we're, we're um, uh, doing partnerships with and things. That vulnerability starts with us because if we can't be vulnerable with other people, we can't be vulnerable with ourselves, we can't look at where we're not doing well. And the problem that any business has is they have some things that don't work. And so if we have things that don't work and we're unwilling to look at those things that bother us, we're not going to look at what's not working. 
And so we can't do a proper inventory. We just can't do a proper inventory. And so we got to look at the inventory of our business, but we have to start with the business, the, the inventory of our people. And we have to start with the inventory of ourselves. And it starts yeah. with our emotions. Where are we triggered? Where are we falling into the same pattern over and over again, trying to solve something without actually talking about it? See you in the next one. More money podcast. Generate More money podcast. I love it. <laughs> Cheers, brother. Always work with the best, man. Always work with the best. <laughs>